you don't have to like everything. You don't have to dislike everything. Like, you can dislike uh, a white actor, but you can at the same time like another white actor because they are good actors and bad actors, not because they are white. Like, everything wrong with the vogue culture and the impact of feminism, 2021. Uh, this might be the dumbest idea I've ever had. It's fun to watch. It's going to be a long one, so buckle in. We're going to... Well, we're not going to skip anything. We're going to just watch and I'm going to give my two cents about it. A surge in the representation of women across all media, like movies and TV shows, including women at the helm of decades-old franchises, even taking over roles that are traditionally held by men. And honestly, fans have loved it. While it is a big change for everyone, everyone has respected the change and shown up in droves to support these new female heroes. No, I'm just kidding. Everyone hates it, and everyone is really damn pissed about it. And the reviews and box office numbers are just as bad as people. I want to point out that, yeah, I don't think Captain Marvel was a good movie. I don't think the Ghostbusters 2, all the new Star Wars movies were great. But the reason is, isn't because it was casted uh, to be a female version of it. The reason was they were just poorly written, like they were bad movies. Not because of the female characters or the female leads. They were just shit movies altogether. Doctor Who I haven't watched. I, I was thrilled about Batwoman until I saw the trailer and the first episode. Then I was like, okay, this is also really bad written, badly written. And it also was because of the female lead. Uh, Mulan I didn't watch because it was basically a propaganda video for the Chinese government. So fuck China. Everybody knows that. People say, no matter how much Rotten Tomatoes tries to convince us otherwise. But why? Well, it's probably because everybody hates women. Nope, that's not why. Turns out 50% of the population is female. And you know what? They're not going- Over 50%, not 50%, over 50%. Which actually pisses off a lot of females and feminists in America because over 50% were female. And Hillary lost to Trump which was basically, <clears throat> according to the left, anti-woman. Going to see these movies or supporting these TV shows either. Is it because women hate women? No, it's because these movies and TV shows are, spoiler alert, really bad. They are fucking dog shit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The problem with the modern and very woke representation of women. Now, speaking as a woman of brownish color, I have to say that I don't really see myself connecting with the new Batwoman, Rey Skywalker, the new female doctor, the new Mulan, Captain Marvel, the Charlie's Angels, Harley <laughs> Quinn, and especially... I fucking forgot the Charlie's Angels remake. But then again, they are female in the original one, so... Unfortunately for the new one, the original one, the cast was way better than the new one. Harley Quinn is actually kind of cool, but then again, the character itself is really good, so you can't really miss with that. Actually not Commander Holdo, or as I like to call her, Purple Hair Lady from Star Wars. I just don't like any of these Yeah, characters. that's a bad character too. So stick to your post and follow my orders. Oh God, especially not Commander Holdo. No, no, when I think of incredible badass women, I think of Black Widow or Rita Vertasky from Edge of Tomorrow yeah, and that's... Zoe from Firefly. I think of Eowyn taking down the Witch King of Agma. Ripley from, from Alien, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. In Lord of the Rings. And Wonder Woman oh, walking yeah, into no man's Wonder Woman. This scene just gives me goosebumps. The reason I absolutely love these characters is because their ability is apparent, but oh so understated. Their gender is never brought up as a justification, excuse, or any sort yeah. of complaint. They're fully aware of their strengths and- That is how you make a great character. That is how you uh, make a female lead stand out, just like in the first Wonder Woman movie. The second one was shit, but the first Wonder Woman movie was really good. Weaknesses and use other people's perceptions of their gender to their advantage. Like when Natasha Romanoff lets Russian gangsters think- One of the best scenes, uh, it speaks how badass of a character Black Widow really is. Think that they have her overpowered, when really she can easily break out whenever she wants. 
I like that these women fight for higher callings than themselves. They fight for peace or for justice. The ultimate goal isn't their own glory. Ryan her, 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 her. Of good over evil. Ryan her, her, her. Thanks for following. I volunteered. I'm not walking away. And I have to say that my absolute favorite. Yeah, The Age of Tomorrow is a great example. Like, the female character was actually better than the Tom Cruise one. So, because of how it was written and how the actor played it out, I think. Tom Cruise in, in the majority of the movies is like subpar, maybe like it, it, I don't like Tom Cruise as an actor, but but in that movie he got uh, outshined by the supporting cast. Thing about them is that they don't hate men. They don't feel threatened or put upon by the men around them. Instead, they form bonds with them and work with them shoulder to shoulder as equals and their own power is not diminished, the creators of these new female characters would probably say the same thing. That these characters are here to do the right thing and give young girls everywhere positive... Rep this scene gives me... Like, I want to puke when I see this. Like, this was the worst scene of current uh, DC comics, films or TV shows. This was like... This was the scene that almost made me not watch Batwoman. Representations to look up to, but how have they done that? Well, let's look at the first mistake. And the actress is really is fucking bad too. And that is taking over existing male franchises. A few years ago, it was announced that Doctor Who, a BBC program that has been a staple of British programming for the better part of the last six decades, would for the first time feature a female doctor. Now, to say that all the fans were against this would be just as inaccurate as saying that everyone was for it. People were intrigued about this new direction, but were worried that their favorite show would get the same treatment that Star Wars and Ghostbusters had gotten before it. Search male, replace with female, with a lethal dose of identity politics. You see, in recent years, the introduction of female-led media has not been simply a nod to female empowerment and the opportunity to take stories into new and interesting directions. No, it's usually accompanied with some pretty heavy-handed reinforcement of about time, and this is what we all need. And while it can sound empowering, it comes off as very self-congratulatory and self-aggrandizing and completely distracts from why people tune in every week. The story and the characters. Boring. I can show you what it reminds me of, like how female characters are represented uh, in the current film industry. This is how it sounds and looks like how the females are uh, represented. Not this one. This one. This is the fucking uh, feminist and woke movement in films and TV. Yeah, yeah, tapping yourself on the shoulder. ...state that woke feminism is making. It feels entitled yeah. to its success. Remember when Charlie... They, they are the real-life cherries. Charlie's Angels was set to release a few years ago, and people were doubting whether it would be a good movie. And here's what the director, Elizabeth Banks, had to say about it. Oh my fucking god, yeah. My real plea is for men to have enough empathy to go see movies starring women. Because I've been asked to go see movies starring men my entire life. No, you're and not. And happily have done so. That, that's a fucking dumb ar argument. Like, you haven't been asked to go watch men movies. You have gone and watched men movies. So to ask people to go and watch female movies is like telling them that this is what you should like. Which is so fucking stupid. I hope everybody would st just stop, the, stop it. I, I wrote a thing on Twitter yesterday about the same exact same thing in the streaming world. Like, there are... Uh, influencers and like lifestyle coaches and streaming coaches saying that you, you should go and see what's only people of color uh, and minority streams because they need your support. I think that's actually like condescending towards them because that implements that you would be you think you're like better than them and saying that don't worry I'm here to save you I'm gonna tell everybody they should go and watch you that's a fucking toxic and like dirty way of thinking things. I don't know why men don't return the favor. 
Now, female creators or male reason. creators of female empowering shows might feel they're justified in their sense of entitlement of success, support, and loyalty from fan bases. But that doesn't mean that people are going to give it to them. In fact, entitlement is often universally met with scorn and mockery. But of course, they don't think that they're being entitled. They think that they're asking for what they're due. Oh wait, that is the definition of entitlement. But the <laughs> energy they're spending on demanding uh, success is the energy no, they're no, not no, no, no. Spending where they need to. And this is the next mistake that woke feminism is making. The characters, these examples for young girls everywhere, well, they're not that great. I need you to fix his suit. Oh my fucking god. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. No. When it fits a woman. Oh my. Imagine the hubris of taking the work of someone else. Bruce Wayne in this situation, someone who battle tested and designed something for themselves, imagine strolling in and demanding that the suit be fixed to fit you and that it is only perfect once it fits a woman who did nothing to earn it except be a woman. I'm sorry, am I supposed to connect with this behavior? Yeah, especially when you know, know that this female broke into the bad game. She wasn't even given the title. She just broke in and took it. She took everything a man built and declared it her own. Like, what the fuck? Am I Look at that fucking green too. Like, strong woman to connect with this behavior am i supposed to look at this and applaud this as a win and apply it into my own life am i supposed to barge into someone's office while they're out to lunch and demand that they swap out the name on the door how about this scene from doctor who where an mi6 official assumes the doctor is a man a fair assumption since the doctor has been a man for many decades does the female doctor handle it with grace with nope. maturity Fuck and no. earn the respect of her audience as well as everyone around her i've had an upgrade hi really really did you really need to put down every man that has come before you why do they need to kneel down for you to stand up and that's the problem with these characters. There is such a bitterness in them. They're not working for something bigger than them. They're driven by vengeance and anger. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. Okay, but but you just took <laughs> credit for Batman's work. That, so that's okay. This antagonistic behavior assumes that we just hand over success to men simply for being men. By that I'm moment, sorry, this is going to be a fucking hot take, but you can just see in a person's like attitude uh, uh his appearance and facial expressions when she when she's a total pit bitch like i'm sorry but you can see that like you can bring up those arguments you can bring up those issues and not be a bitch you know that no male led movie ever does badly and no male character is Come ever criticized or disliked that would mean that solo a movie about a well-known beloved male character should have done well but it didn't i nope. can't believe i need to say this but success needs to be earned but woke feminism thinks that if you don't like these characters then you are a sexist this is the next mistake of woke feminism. There is no such thing as legitimate criticism. No, nope. any criticism of these totally incredible characters must be born out of bitter jealousy and a deep desire to keep women down. That if you dislike a female character, it's because she possesses power and we are more comfortable with seeing women in subservient positions. Even we women who criticize them don't apparently realize the years of brainwashing we've undergone that has told us that the woman's place is one step behind the man, if not in the kitchen. On to the next mistake that woke feminism makes. It's unshakable belief that it is saving society. That men would be bigoted toxic fools if woke feminists weren't putting them in their place. And that women would be helpless, knitting by the fire and weeping into their handkerchiefs, wondering when the men would be home. That young women everywhere would have no role models without woke feminism. Born out of yet another flawed belief that you need to see exactly yourself on screen. Someone who has your skin color, your background in order to connect with them. But that's not how human beings work. And that's not how it... Yeah, like... I think that's a fucking dumb argument like what i look up to like as a role model a lot of uh 
when I was growing up, a lot of African-American football players, also Asian martial art artists like Bruce Lee, who was actually kind of spirited. So my train of thought comes from Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, from all of those people. And mo- majority of my sport like idols are a- everything else but white, but not because they are not white because they connect with me mentally and connect connect with me like physically also so i don't choose who i look up to or who my idols are based on the color of the skin or the gender they are or the sexuality they are like stephen fry is in my opinion one of the best uh, people in the earth yeah he's a man and yeah he's also white but if you actually listen to Stephen fry what he says what he talks about if you can't see his brilliance then you're you're a close-minded person you're as bad as as a racist you're as bad as as a sexist like don't let the color of, of of a person's skin or the sexuality or gender be limiting. Like, that's fucking dumb. Why would you limit the amount of things you can hear, the amount of things you can see, when you can see everything and just decide based on that what you like and what you don't like? You don't have to like everything. You don't have to dislike everything. Like, you can dislike uh, a white actor but you can at the same time like another white actor because they are good actors and bad actors not because they are white like just fucking enjoy the things you enjoy and dislike the things you dislike how imagination works regardless more female representation on screen is a good thing and feminism has been doing a great job on that front for many decades now that is until woke feminism came out of nowhere punched traditional feminism in the gut and said it was here to save it remember when captain marvel came out and made a billion dollars at the box office and everyone was like congratulating brie larson and she was like guys women can be leads in movies just like men jeez I think what drives me crazy about this is that there is absolutely no acknowledgement of the past. Oh yeah, Sarah Sarah Connor Connor. did not terminate the Terminator and Ripley did not destroy the universe. There we go, Ripley. As if these women didn't decades ago dominate the box office as badass action heroes. Strong female characters have been... Yeah, Sarah Connor from the 80s. But unfortunately the current actress decided to go to the dark side than the woke feminists would have you believe but there's one clear the remake difference the terminator with the females two only two so they These fucked females that up coming onto the screen weren't perfect superheroes no they had shortcomings and they were up against insurmountable odds and they fought back they learned they Fucking grew Ripley. and when they overcame the enemy we saw ourselves in them and believed that we too could overcome everything that i was fucking eight years old when i watched aliens aliens uh the second one and the only reason why i wasn't scared was actually ripley she was scared also in the movie but she persevered because she needed to and that gave me courage to watch watch the movie also even though i was scared but because ripley persevered i persevered scares us well what about the female characters of today they're either completely perfect or other times they're rude arrogant and entitled and tend to stay that way you're a female bruce wayne awesome hilarious handsome piece of piece of (laughs) piece of shit most commonly, we associate these traits with brash men. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away. What are you? Take that off. What are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. I know guys with none of that worth 10 of you. If our main hero possesses these traits, then it's almost guaranteed that it will be their undoing. That is until they learn some much needed humility. 
The That's reason true. the Marvel franchise was so incredibly successful was because at the heart of it was the transformation of two men. Captain America started off as an idealistic, selfless servant to his country, but eventually learned the tiny amount of selfishness needed for him to actually live his life and be happy. Tony Stark went from a hedonistic, self-serving playboy constantly impressed by his own genius to a man who found meaning and paid the ultimate price to preserve. Yeah, Tony Stark's arc was basically in the beginning, he was jerking off to uh, the, his own reflection from the mirror. And at the end of the arc, he was masturbating on the reflection of everybody else. That's basically Tony Stark, but he's still like masturbating for an image of himself. But at the end, there was others also. Because let's not forget, he is still an egoistic person in the end of the uh, MCU. But in the beginning he was really bad a really bad egoistic sexist piece of uh, uh, piece of shit but that's like the growth story that's what made the character good deserve it people could connect with these heroes see themselves in their struggles and believe that they too could rise from their errors and achieve greatness i don't actually like captain america as a character female woke hero doesn't get this traditional is that a hot take journey Mulan is no longer a scared I think girl, Bruce, taking Bruce up Banner arms and Hulk for the first is better. time in order to protect her elderly father, earning her place in the army and earning the respect of everyone. You should you should read a comic called The Death of Hulk to see how fucking deep the character really is. Around her. No, in the new version, Mulan has always had chi flowing through her, and she no was always course. meant to be the greatest warrior of all time. What's holding her back is society's expectation that a woman should not fight. Captain Marvel is the most powerful Avenger. So there's no competition for me because I'm the strongest, so it's yeah. just kind of like a... And what's holding her back? I guess her desire for her mentor's approval, I guess? And she overcomes that easily. Prove to me! You can beat me with... Now Rey, Rey is, well, perfect. Without a day of training, she can mind control guards and pick up a lightsaber and kick Kylo Ren's butt. She's amazing. She can save the day. What a queen. What a bunch of queens. Slaying all day, doing epic backflips and shit. <laughs> like, who cares? Look, I want a woman to save the day. I like that just as much as I like the man saving the day. But is it too much to ask that it be earned? That the powers and abilities aren't just handed to these characters, but that they work at them? They hone their skills, suffer defeats that they learn from, and meditate on losses, and come back stronger than ever. And can these women suffer consequences when they behave in terrible ways? Like in The Last Jedi, when Commander Holdo does not share with her team what the plan is for saving the last vestiges of the rebellion. Instead, when a male subordinate asks her what the plan is, she immediately insults him. Before we can find a new base, so what's our plan? Our plan? Captain? Not Commander, right? Wasn't it Leia's last official act to demote you? She assumes that because he's a man, he is not entitled to communication. The Rebellion is this close to being extinguished. He's not here to have a pissing match with you. He wants to be useful. That's where you're wrong, you don't. I just want to know what's going on. Of course you do. I understand. I've dealt with plenty of trigger-happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive. Dangerous. And the last thing we need right now. So stick to your post and follow my orders. This is not good leadership. This is childish behavior. Expecting that your team should follow you blindly. And if they don't, it's because of their toxic masculinity. Yep. And you know what? She dies a hero. And everyone's like, hooray, we should always believe women, even when they're being terrible leaders. Okay, can Hollywood come up with a better villain than just society? That society does the first Wonder Woman movie. Because despite Diana being literally a god killer, she isn't just an instant warrior. No, she works at it. She trains hard with incredible female warriors and takes falls and hard hits, but learns and grows. So when we finally see her kick some German butt, we revel in it. Because she's worked through blood, sweat, and tears to get that good. But what about in the second movie? Well, they undo all that. 
they show a 10 year old Diana easily besting women three times her age yeah. and ultimately losing because of a minor detail. So she's been magic the entire time? Why did she need to train as hard as she did in the first movie as a teenager that was a and dumb, as an adult? Dumb thing to the do problem with these perfect the princesses is that it's impossible like to connect with them. That's not me. The I'm not perfect. That's so very I'm not born with magic. Story. That makes me able to air. That's what makes me fucking uh mad about hollywood is like they're fixed on changing origin stories of characters already having origin stories kick spears at the enemy sorry and if the lesson here is that every woman has innate abilities they're born with that are being squashed because of society's restrictions well that's just a terrible lesson because we're telling women that we have nothing to learn we're born with everything we're capable of being and we should only trust and listen to women and men they're just interested in sex and keeping you down i guess my question here is what are woke well that, there's part of that that's right but feminists after are they maybe i shouldn't joke equality? about that if so why does it seem like all their tv shows and movies are all about putting men down and propping women up as perfect it's an old lemma the only time i've been a man that last body dear lord how do you cope with all that ego and if they are for equality, why oh why are they pushing the worst lesson for women possible? That women don't need to be criticized. There is so much growth that happens when we are criticized. Yes, not all criticism we get in our lives is legitimate. Sometimes it's born from jealousy or fear, but criticism is necessary to keep you down. It's almost as if woke all the bad things we- How the fuck do you be the character if there's no growth story? Like you automatically be perfect. Every character has a, a growth story, even Thor, and he's a fucking god. Like, Thor was stripped down his abilities and powers because he was acting like an ass. He needed to grow in order to get the abilities back. And then he lost them again. Because of his father dying and hella kicking ass. And he needed to grow even more. accuse men of being arrogant, bigoted, or disagreeable. I think Brie Larson is a great example of this. She is the true embodiment of woke feminism. I did I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise, I mean? No, I will be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you very much. Well, you know, I mean, he does his own stunts, you know. As someone who is at the top of her career, Brie Larson doesn't take the... Yeah, I think Brie Larson is a perfect example of like what not to be if you're a famous female person. The opportunity to give credit to the unsung hero. Like you can you can be proud of what you've done, but you don't have to be a fucking bitch about it. And she's let's be honest, she's the she's one of the worst bitches ever. Of movie making like her stunt double, but instead needs to tell everyone just how awesome she is. Work at being the best person that I can be and using this platform. Hello, for his talk is <laughs> Does it mean is that like a personal attack or something? In closing, this is not feminism. This is toxic femininity. But yeah. what do I know? I'm probably the byproduct of years of brainwashing by the patriarchy. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was actually a great video. Again, everybody who knows me knows that I don't like videos that much, but I'm gonna give this a... Oh, I already liked it. When? I'm gonna give it another like. This was a great video. Uh, this is actually... I, I, I agree a lot of the things here. Like... When you're writing a female lead, focus on the fucking character and the story. Not that he, uh, she is just a gender that you want to lift up. The lift up will happen automatically if the story is good and if the character is good. Don't, don't create another fucking bitch. Create a uh, decent human being. Create a good idol to young girls all around the world. Not a fucking shit idol. No, don't do that.